lovers and welcome back to the woodshed. In honor of the recently deceased Dusty Hill from ZZ Top, who I absolutely love, I have a pretty luscious beard going on. It will be exiting by the next time you see me, so just enjoy it while you can. So recently, bluegrass has been on an explosive rise in popularity. A young artist named Billy Strings has been playing to some absolutely gargantuan crowds. And Billy's been doing his part to carry the torch and bring bluegrass to a lot of non-bluegrass listeners and kind of grow the fan base of the genre. I love bluegrass. It's near and dear to my heart. My granddad got me started on it. And with this recent explosion in popularity, I thought it might be cool to take the old Martin Dreadnought box and give you guys a basic walkthrough of a bluegrass standard called Salt Creek. Salt Creek is a tune that you're going to hear at most bluegrass jams, festivals, and you're even going to hear it on the big stage with guys like Billy. Sit back, relax, grab your acoustic guitar, put some big old thick strings on it, grab a thick pick, and let's get to flat picking. Roll it. This week's episode is brought to you by The Woodshed. The Woodshed Guitar Experience is a three-day event in the lovely Lake Francis, Tennessee. This year we've got Robin Ford, Brent Mason, Andy Timmons, Mark Leterry, Greg Cock, Laurie Basilio, Tyler Larson, and some other really special guests. We can't wait to see you there. Registration's open. There's a few spots left, so if you're thinking about jumping on over to The Woodshed Guitar Experience, we'd love to have you. We'll see you this weekend. Okay, a couple of things to note when you uh, start playing this tune. There's a lot of alternate picking. There's a lot of inside-outside picking. And the most important thing I would say is this isn't built on scales or modes. And I'm using quotations because, of course, there is a scalar framework. There's a modal framework. But in general, there's so many things that weave in between. Like maybe you have a major seven sometimes and a flat seven sometimes. Maybe you have a minor third and a major third. There's a lot of things that bounce back and forth. There's a flat five and a regular five. So don't try to think of it as a singular scale. Think of it as what sits over each chord and how that chord goes to the next chord. And what's going to make the melody or the variation make the most sense from a melodic standpoint. All right, let's dig in. I'm going to start off with just a basic uh, way to play Salt Creek. I kind of, kind of debated on how I wanted to do this because you could teach, you know, all of the... Uh, cliche bluegrass licks, but that's not really how I learned. I didn't learn by playing licks. I learned by learning tunes. So um, this was a tune I played with my granddad a lot, and I'm going to show you a really basic way to play it. And then for a more advanced uh, lick or two, jump over to the old Patreon. So in general, in any bluegrass jam, this song is normally played out of the key of A, sliding the capo up to the second fret, playing the G position there. For the sake of this video, I'm assuming that there might be half of you guys who don't even own a capo, right? Because you're maybe electric players. And I wanted to teach it out of the key of G. So the tune has two sections. And the way it, you know, sometimes a lot of, a lot of jazz standards, their sections are um, A section, A section, B section, A section. In a lot of bluegrass and fiddle tunes, sections go A section, A section, B section, B section. That's how that is, like A, A, B, B. So the chords to the first section are um, played about like this. One, two, three, four. And the second section, you'd repeat that twice. The second section would go like this. Right? So now let me teach you the lead to that. Um, I advise definitely getting some uh, versions of this, maybe from Tony Rice or uh, maybe Billy Strings or Trey Hensley, Jake Workman, all these really great, fabulous acoustic players, um, and kind of hearing different versions of it, different inflections. More importantly, I would say listen to instruments that aren't the acoustic guitar. I would say listen to fiddle players play Salt Creek. Listen to mandolin players. Let's hit the tune. So that right there is just what would be considered an intro, a, a, a section to set the tempo for the song. 
Yeah. Sometimes you'll have it where it shuffles across all three strings. Or it might be kind of cross-picked. And this leads us in. So let's take it from the top and take it really slow, okay? One, two, three, four. Let's get that much of it. You can see that it outlines the triads really nicely. In the melody. So basically, instead of playing just a G, you kind of got the luxury of having this open string, and then you can put the fifth of the chord right there, so you have two Gs and a D. So you see right there, we're outlining that F. That heads us to the four chord. Now we're going to play the F just like that, right? So take it one more time. Let me show you a variation of it. Where you lead with the B string. Another variation might be like this. Where you're really outlining. So that would be like this. So here's your three variations. Variation two. Variation three. So you can start to see how depending on who you're listening to, how you might play the basic form of the melody. Let's continue on. We just finished. Let's repeat the first part again. And now we're gonna have a tag. So this tag kind of harkens back into um, the Doc Watson, Norman Blake, um, you know, even Tony kind of thing where you're outlining so much of the three, uh, four, flat five, five. Then you'll have six and flat seven. All those notes will be in the scale. So this is tag number one. Really great up tempo. One, two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. So let's take that slow. And what's cool is you hear the minor third to major third against the open third. Really gives you that really grassy kind of sound. You can, again, with variations, you could have variations of the, the tag that might be something like this. You see how I, I started the lick leading into the G. That's a type of move that a guy like Billy Strings uses a lot, and I kind of hear it um, lifted from Doc Watson. Where the seven ends up shifting in one lick, right? So a major seven, really happy, open. Now we're gonna do flat seven, and then our little chromatic. Another variation of a tag would be this. So there we have that major seven again. So you have open E and open B ringing out. You have that inside-outside picking thing that gets talked about a lot. 
However, I'm just alternate picking as much as I can. Outside of a couple of slides in there. And this one you'll notice we're sliding from minor third down to two. That kind of frames that D sound. You do it with slides. So now you have several variations. Let's play the first part with some of those variations. So you see how it kind of fits together. The tags are interchangeable and the lick into the F is interchangeable. All of those are completely valid options. Let's move on to the second part. So the second part is basically G, F, G, tag, five, one. Here's the melody line. And you notice that tag return. You could even swap out for another tag. Whatever might suit your fancy there. That's a great option to even maybe play one of your rock and roll licks. Just make sure you end it with minor third to major third. Down to root, okay? And if you notice, I played the rock and roll G. play minor pentatonic all the way across that tag section. So the melody line repeats itself from the G to the F. It walks up to three. That's your main kind of lick. Uh, that's if you guys have listened to a lot of Paul Gilbert, you can recognize that pattern. Right? And this actually sneaks into some of those Steve Morrison Dixie Dregs tunes quite a, quite a bit. And then we're just going six to one right there. And then move back a whole step. Now what's interesting, and you notice this from the intro, when I play over the F chord, I don't like jumping up. That's a big stretch. And also that melody can get a bit monotonous just playing the same thing in two different places. So when I go down to F, I will play this kind of minor pentatonic-y sound. That kind of sound. To walk me back up to G. So let's take a variation of that. So what happened there is I played this cluster of notes. So basically I'm thinking about every note and building a melody out of those notes right there. Not trying to overthink a pattern, not trying to play lick style, right? I'm really just trying to have the freedom to play these notes in any order that I want that would fit inside the rhythmic beat, right? Like that. So the freedom of being able to improvise in this open position is really where most bluegrass players start to get their feet wet it's where they all kind of start in their playing. It's just getting used to playing through these notes. Right? So it's a bit of a hybrid scale with lots of different things going on. Even though it's kind of to the ear, it just sounds major. So we have one, two, flat three, three, right? And most of the time, guitar players won't get on that four there. They'll go on up to the D. So you have your major pentatonic looking thing there. Let's, let's go ahead and play four, flat five, five, and then 
six, flat seven, one. So it's not really a scale. It's more like building blocks to put your own licks together that sit within the amount of beats that you have to work with. Let's play that second section one more time, a little slower so you guys can play it with me. One, two, three, four. Variation. Variation. So you notice my brain was giving you a different variation to play with, right? Revisit the top of the video for the performance um, to kind of get some different ideas. But in general, that's enough to get you aimed in the right direction for Salt Creek. Uh, like I said, it's more about being really aware of the rhythm, the chord changes, what's happening. And then when that F chord comes around, knowing that you can play through a cycle of notes, basically a cluster of notes. Also knowing that you have several options for a tag. Right? And if all else fails, you could play minor pentatonic blues shape with a slide here and a slide here. So if you're used to playing in those kind of rock areas, a nice variation of the tag would be that. End it with a G run, and you'd be good to go. Now let's hear that up to speed. One last detail, maintaining relaxation. These are big strings. Uh, the lowest string is a 56. I like that. Um, you have to maintain a relaxed position. You don't want to use um, too small of a picking stroke or it just sounds stiff and tense. You want to play all the way through. And there you have it. That's some Salt Creek for you. Thanks for hanging out this week in the woodshed. If you want more bluegrass, I definitely recommend going to the source. You're gonna to wanna to get you some Bill Monroe, Flatten Scruggs, New Grass Revival, Tony Rice Unit, Billy Strings, Trey Hensley and Rob Ikes. Any of that will get you going in the right direction. If you feel like just getting your face melted, may I recommend anything that has Bela Fleck, Mark O'Connor, Sam Bush, Tony Rice, and Jerry Douglas in the same band. That's absolutely visceral. Uh, for the more modern stuff, I'd check out Sierra Hole and the Punch Brothers, Chris Thiele, Nickel Creek, that kind of thing. Be sure to join me on Patreon, patreon.com slash andywoodmusic. Over there, we've got a great community. I've got over 200 lesson videos. We've got backing tracks, tabs, Axe Effects presets. Every week, we do a weekly live Zoom masterclass. It's really awesome. And we've also got our own private Discord server so you guys can all chat and hang out together. It's a really cool community. Come over there and hang out with us. We can help you get your play into the next level. Okay, if you're looking for bookings, where I'm going to be playing, how to get in touch with me, all that kind of stuff is at andywoodmusic.com. I've also got my store over there where you can get my music, my videos, lesson bundles with True Fire, JTC, Jam Play, all that kind of good stuff. I've also got tone packs, Axe Effects settings, uh, tablatures, transcriptions, backing tracks. All of that is for sale over at andywoodmusic.com. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time.